everybody in Psych 1. I hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're keeping up with everything and that your life is kind of settling down at this point. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this second recorded lecture here, uh, sorry we can't course caption still, but I'm hoping that <coughs> next week or two we'll, we'll be able to start doing that again. Uh, but what we're going to be doing in this video here is recording the sort of lecture that we were going to have after the second exam. And what this lecture really entails is just walking you through by far the most challenging paper that we have in this class. Uh, because what you're supposed to be doing in this paper is actually going out and searching for literature on topics within psychology that you find interesting. And in particular, you're going to be, once you find that literature, comparing and contrasting two specific types of resources that people use and trying to learn more about specific topics within, say, a psychology major or any other field related to psychology. These resources that we call popular press, sometimes they're also, uh, actually usually just they're called popular press articles, sometimes they're called secondary sources, but, but usually popular press articles is what you hear about with these. And these other types of resources that have a whole litany of different names uh, that are usually called peer-reviewed journal articles, but sometimes you'll hear them referred to as empirical papers or primary resources. And what this video is going to do is not only lay out exactly what you need to do for these papers, but how to actually get the journal articles that you'll be using for this paper, because we are well aware that many of you have maybe never gone through this journey before and never looked for these resources. And it's developing the skills to be able to find these resources is expected of you when you move on to future classes outside of Psych 1. So we need to give you some of those skill sets that you'll need as you progress. And again, that's why this is probably the most challenging assignment, but one that also has a lot of value. In terms of what you're going to do specifically for this paper, you are, as I mentioned, going to be comparing and contrasting the writing styles and the, and the ways that two different types of resources address a very similar topic. Now, what we're looking at here in terms of similar topics is a little flexible, but what you're hoping to do is find two articles in these different resources that are close enough related to each other that your GSI recognizes that yes, they, they are addressing what they would kind of consider the same topic. Uh, usually I always like to tell students that two points of reference is usually what you're looking for. So you know, just look for two articles that address depression or gender. Uh, maybe try to find two articles that contrast different gender differences that we see in depression rates or, or the impact that depression has on people based on the, the gender that they identify as. Uh, you, you could potentially maybe not just talk about dating, uh, but, but maybe dating and, uh, you know, the, the internet and how those two things have changed. They don't have to be about the exact same thing. I, I don't need you to find two articles written by the same author that happen to be coming from these different mediums. But again, what you need to do for this article is find two things that are closely enough related that your GSI will look at it and say, yes, they, they seem to be closely enough related. Uh, if you want to, you can try to check with your GSI on the topics, but I encourage you not to overload them with this. You are all smart and capable enough to be able to figure out if two articles that you're looking at seem to be linked enough. Uh, but if there is any issues where you, you kind of recognize that they're not necessarily perfectly overlapped, uh, checking with your GSI before it's too late is definitely ideal. Uh, you don't want to have your GSI reading over your assignment and saying these things don't have anything to do with each other, so I have to take off some points for that lack of relatedness. Uh, in terms of other big requirements for this particular paper, they do have to address psychology topics. Uh, anything within the area of psychology or some of the related areas is sufficient, uh, but just make sure you're not turning in an MCB, a molecular and cell biology paper, or um, I've seen ones that, that actually address, uh, what were some of the ones that, that I've seen before, uh, political science, I've seen ones that address obviously just chemistry topics, uh, and you want to avoid that. Right? You, you want to make sure that you're looking for things that are addressing psychology specific topics. Uh, fortunately, there is another requirement we're going to talk about later that should help ensure that you're only finding psychology related topics, 
but I always do want to warn people because out of the 400 or so that are submitted, usually each semester there's one or two that seem to have nothing to do with psychology, uh, probably because they came from a student recycling a paper from past semesters, which is strongly discouraged. Uh, you, you do not want to use old papers in your poli-sci class for this one, or it, it will obviously cost you a ton of points. Another big requirement for this compare and contrast assignment is that you have to find articles that come from very specific sources. We'll talk about which sources you're looking for later on. And then it has, they both have to be actually less than 10 years old. Uh, for those of you that didn't remember, uh, we, we're in 2020 right now. So any articles published after, well, since this is due in April, uh, any articles published before, I guess, May of 2020 uh, are not acceptable. Uh, yeah, you'll have to make sure that your articles were published after May of 2010. Uh, and if you don't find articles that were published after May of 2010, you're going to, much like not having stuff related to psychology, uh, receive a significant deduction in the points that you're going to earn for this. Uh, you can see the exact deductions if you look at the paper instructions that are posted online. Those are the instructions that your GSI is going to be using when grading you. Uh, there's also a rubric that, that's linked to that, uh, that that will reference some of the point distributions that are covered in the directions. Uh, it, it's really important to note that these requirements, that you find articles that have to come from specific sources, have to be less than 10 years old, and have to be addressing psychology topics, are at a set in stone. If you don't get something that's published within the past 10 years, you're not grabbing something from the approved resources, you're essentially ruining the whole point of the assignment. So it doesn't make sense, no matter how well written your paper is, to give you a lot of credit for something that didn't allow you to develop the skill we're trying to get you to develop. Uh, even if you wrote a great English paper in your history class, obviously you wouldn't get a lot of points for that. Same thing for this one. Quality of writing is expected, but you have to make sure that you're following the directions to the letter. In terms of how you can do that, how you can find articles that are on the approved list, making sure that you're, you're actually following all the different requirements to it, we have a lot of resources at your disposal. The, the best resource for you, since most of us are now home for the remainder of the semester, is the UC Berkeley Library website. And the, the link to the library website is provided here. I encourage you to bookmark it on your computer if you haven't already, uh, because you probably will, as you progress, encounter lots of assignments that are similar to this. In terms of how to find specific articles within the branch of psychology, there's also uh, another link within the library website that I encourage you to also bookmark. It's the Psychology Research Guide that really walks you through all the different things that UC Berkeley has made available to psychology students. And it's really important to highlight at this moment how valuable that resource actually is. We spend a lot of money to be able to access premier articles and spread across a wide range of different topics. And the, the best thing for you to do as a college student to take advantage of this is to frequently check out this on, on different topics that you find interesting. Because when you use, leave UC Berkeley and are no longer affiliated with some academic school, uh, those resources become extremely difficult to access. It, it's very expensive uh, to be able to, to access these things once you're gone. So taking advantage of this now, getting familiar with this now, is something I always encourage you to do. In terms of this specific assignment, you can actually find a, a guide, a walkthrough for how to find specific articles in this class. If you go to that Library Berkeley website and, and kind of click through the link, links uh, to get to the find articles thing, you'll, you'll see if you look more into the psychology website, uh, a little extra walkthrough that pre previous librarians have created to, to kind of help expedite the process and get students to the resources that they need. So I encourage you again, check out the library website, check out the links so you can really get a sense of what's out there and how to navigate through these things. Because it takes a little while, especially if this is your first time, uh, to get accustomed to the search engines and how to grab what you're looking for. Uh, what I always suggest to students when they do proceed with this assignment is that even though you need to find two articles from the two different sources, what we again call popular press versus peer-reviewed articles, 
uh, I always encourage students to start with the popular press articles. Uh, it's because they're significantly less published each year in popular press articles on psychology topics. There's also fewer resources out there in terms of popular press journals and, and popular press things that you can use for this component of the assignment. In particular, you're not only limited in that time span of needing stuff that's published in the last 10 years, but you do need to only find popular press articles that are coming from one of three resources, Time Magazine, Newsweek, or Psychology Today. Note, Time slash Time Magazine has lots of different iterations. Only the big Time Magazine journal is what you can access for these. Same thing with Newsweek. You'll find lots of different iterations of Newsweek if you start looking. The Newsweek journal is what you're going to be actually accessing if you go with that one. The one that most people do use though is Psychology Today. And, and this one has a, a litany of different things that are published, but there's also, if you start digging through the Psychology Today's website, go straight to their link, lots of things that you can't actually use for this journal, or sorry, for this paper. Uh, on the Psychology Today journal's website, You'll find lots of blogs, you'll find lots of short little blurbs, things that never really made it to publication, and those things aren't what we're looking for in this paper. It doesn't help, again, to have you can compare and contrast an article that's not the type of article that we wanted you to look for with another article. So be mindful that if you grab an article from either of these resources, it needs to be at least three pages long if they were published, um, but a lot of them have moved online, so if you can't find a page length, make sure that it's at least a thousand words. Uh, most of them are going to be significantly more. If it's not, then you're not getting something that, that's really representative of the articles that we're looking for. Uh, another thing that you have to be mindful of is that you do not grab blogs from Psychology Today. Uh, the nice catch with blogs is that on the website URLs, where you're going to probably pull most of these, it'll actually say on the URL that it is a blog. You'll see in caps the word blog in the, the string of different letter and number combinations that, that pop up in the URL. Do not use blogs because, again, you are totally ruining the purpose of the assignment if you're using them. Uh, and to try to discourage you from doing this as much as possible, we're going to take a ton of points off if you are using blogs, if you're using short papers, or grabbing something that hasn't been published in the last 10 years. So be mindful of this. Now, for those of you wondering how you're going to find these popular press articles, as I mentioned, you can technically go through the websites to find it. Uh, that is a possibility if you want to go into Newsweek and Time Magazine and Psychology Today's websites. Students have done that in the past um, to some success, but we actually, through our library, have a really wonderful search engine that helps you kind of streamline this process and ensures that you can avoid some of those issues with blogs and really non-articles on the websites that are sometimes provided. Uh, and, and the search engine that we give you is something called Academic Search Complete. It's a very broad search engine that actually pulls from a litany of different resources, some of them not being psychology related. So if you are going to use Academic Search Complete to be able to find those journal articles that you're looking for, you really want to be mindful of the specific requirements for, for how to search for things within Academic Search Complete. Um, there's a whole walkthrough on the psychology links website or the psychology website link uh, that, that I mentioned earlier within the, the, the library system uh, that they can walk you through some of the, the common pitfalls that people encounter when searching for things on academic search complete. Um, but just know that the search engine that you're going to have brought up, if you click on academic search complete through the URL that I showed you earlier, you're going to see a search engine that looks like this. And what you can do to ensure that you're looking for specific topics uh, within those journals that we talked about earlier is actually limit the specific journals that you are having the, the academic search complete search engine look through. 
Uh, there's some additional things that you can do to actually make your life easier as well that we'll talk about as we progress. But looking at this image right here and trying to enter in the exact same things in your own search when looking for a topic, try not to make it about relationships. Everybody makes it about relationships. Um, try to find a different topic outside of relationships that you find interesting. Um, and also avoid serial killers. I don't know why we always get 40 or 50 papers on serial killers each year. And usually when people search for it, they struggle mightily to find something about it because we don't publish a lot on that random topic that again, for some weird reason, about one in 10 people find really interesting. I can understand the, the interest, but to, to find articles on it is sometimes really challenging. So you use your own term on the bottom, your own thing that really picks your interest on the bottom. Uh, and from that, and the following of these terms, I also, again, encourage you to do some other filtering processes. One of the things that you can do to help save yourself the, the depression slash frustration that many students experience when they find the article that they think is perfect and covers the thing they want, but they find out it's too old or not coming from the right resource, is also limit the dates that this journal article can be published in. Uh, obviously, we are past 2018. This is an old reference, I think. I think this actually came from the Library Resources website. Um, we're now at 2020. Uh, so or what we need to do when you're searching now is limit the publication date back to, I guess it would be May of 2010 to, well, our current time. Uh, there might be a few publications in April of 2020 by the time this is out. Um, but, but kind of spanning those 10 years, again, ensures that you're not going to find something that you find wonderful, but you can't use it. Because I, I do want to reiterate, if it's 10 years and one month old, it's too old and you will lose a ton of points. You will lose a ton of points for the paper if you grab something that's older. Sorry if that distraction of my young child yelling at me uh, caught, was caught on the microphone there. Uh, anyway, making sure that you, again, avoid those dates that, that are beyond the 10-year span is, is a really good way to save yourself some frustration. So setting this in advance can help you circumvent that problem. And again, doing this through the popular press articles in the beginning can help you a lot. Uh, or at least for the popular press articles in the beginning can help you a lot because that can help you find a specific article you find interesting and then narrow your topic a little bit more. So maybe you were interested in relationships or maybe you were interested in depression or eating issues or a whole litany of random things that, that, that maybe you've decided you want to explore. Be mindful, it does not have to cover specific things within the class that we've discussed. It just has to be about psychology topics uh, once you've kind of narrowed things down a little bit more when you find the articles, uh, you can then do your next search a little bit more effectively. Uh, if you're looking for some things that really can help you meet the other requirements, when your results do come up for your, your search, make sure that you are grabbing the right things. So make sure that you're grabbing Newsweek. Uh, and again, you see here in this description, that there is a list of something called Newsweek Global. It's not actually Newsweek, so you can't really be using that one. Uh, make sure that it's something that's published within the specific date ranges that we're looking for. Usually if you restrict things, you're good, but sometimes there are random things that pop up. And make sure it's the right page length. You know, don't see a quarter of a page, eighth of a page, half page, and, and use those articles. You gotta make sure that it's the right page length. And usually when you do search through academic search complete, another big plus to this is you will be given, if you are correctly logged in, we'll talk about this a little bit later, you'll be given the full articles. The, you can download as PDFs and save onto your computer so you can read at your leisure instead of having to try to crank through it in just one sitting. Um, but give yourself time when searching for these topics because sometimes it can be a little challenging. Um, but again, if you find these first, you can narrow things down a little bit more so the next part is a lot easier. What is that next part? Again, the, the next component to this paper is then finding a peer review, sometimes again, it's called a primary resource or an empirical paper article that is again published within the past 10 years and it's coming from one of what we call our top tier journals. 
uh, please be mindful for this search portion that there are a ton of popular peer-reviewed journals out there and a large number of them are unfortunately not very good uh, if you progress through psychology you're going to learn a little bit more about what's called the tier system in journals where there are specific journals that everybody in specific branches of psychology aspire to get published in but there's also these kind of other tiers where if you didn't get published the first time in your journal that you want to be published in you can still get sort of a consolation prize by being published in lesser journals that don't have the same standards and rigors of all the top journals it's tough for us to always know exactly what the top tier journal is, even as faculty members and graduate students. So to streamline this process, you'll see in the instructions if you print them up that there are very specific journals that you can use. I think some of them on the list don't have the word the in front of them, even though technically the journals start with the word the. But outside of that small, minor, this is obvious difference, you do not want to use journals that do not fall under the list. Uh, if you grab articles from journals that are not on the list, you will again have a huge deduction of points because you are essentially again ruining the point of the paper by grabbing journal articles that aren't from premier journals and that, that don't really meet the standards of what we're looking for. And it's important to note that I'm going to stress to all of the GSIs that this is something that will not be negotiable for this class. You cannot email your GSI or email me saying, I found this perfect article, but it seems to come from this source. Can I please, please, please pub use this one for my paper? The answer will always be no. If I find out a GSI has given somebody an exception, that GSI will be in big trouble because we want to be universally fair and equal with everybody on this component of the paper. So not only do these articles have to come from journals that were published within the past 10 years or journal articles that were published within the past 10 years, make sure you are mindful of the fact that there is a difference between last referenced or last cited and when it was last published. So there's no such thing as last published. Just look for when it was published um, and it cannot be more than 10 years old and it has to come from some of those approved sources. Other small requirements is that it has to be at least eight pages long. Neuroscience papers can be a little bit less than eight pages, three, four, five pages. Um, know that those shortened lengths though do not make neuroscience papers significantly easier. Those are probably the densest papers you'll ever come across if you are looking for peer reviewed journal articles, um, but, but all the rest of them they have to be at least eight pages long. And they do have to meet, again, all of the specific requirements that are listed in the instructions for this paper. So while you're watching this, I'm hoping you already had the instructions printed out. But if, if you don't, pause, make sure you look at it so you're ensured that you are not missing some of the major requirements for these peer-reviewed journal articles because there are huge penalties. You're not following the requirements because, again, you're kind of ruining the point of the paper if you do that. In terms of how to find articles for these resources, you could technically use Academic Search Complete, but it's gonna give you a lot more than you probably want. So instead, what most people do when looking for these peer-reviewed journal articles is use another search engine that's found on the website link that we provided you with called PsycInfo, which is a search engine that's actually accessing stuff from the American Psychological Association, or APA. Uh, there are lots of specific requirements for how to search for things. You, you see here kind of a walkthrough of some of the things that you want to be mindful of, like you want to look for specific titles or you want to look for keywords or you want to look for stuff that's coming from specific journals that, 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 that can actually help you narrow your search down a little bit. But even if you follow these, you have to be able to review everything once you've started your search to, to be sure that the articles you find meeting all the requirements that you're finding articles that are related to that first article that you found that it's not more than 10 years old and it's coming down to the letter uh, from journals that are on the approved list be mindful there are lots of different journals out there that tweak a word here and there and it's very intentional when they do that right those tweaking of words make the journals look a lot better on the surface even if they're crummy journals. So you have to be really aware of what journals are on the approved list. 
when you're doing your search so you can either search specifically within those journals on your search engine or just vet when you find articles that you're looking for whether or not those are coming from approved resources there are some other things that you want to make sure you're, you're checking when your search engine does come back again you want to first of all make sure that the, the wording is perfect you see an example here of a journal that doesn't work on the top because there is some small subtle change there. It's also a little old too. Uh, and, and you see on the bottom in a situation where you're looking for everything you, you need. Obviously the, the one on the bottom is a little older, but you see the full text PDF. You're seeing it's coming from an approved source. And this is good. That's what you're looking for for these searches. Uh, make sure you do find the full article, not just an abstract of it, because these things should be long. It should take you a long time to get through, but once you do it, you should get a real good sense of what these journals are all about. If you don't want to go the route of psych info, there are other options as well. One of the ones that some students have done, if they find a specific journal really interesting to them, they've actually gone through specific journals, which you, you have the ability to do, so it's something called e-journals, uh, on our Berkeley Library website. Uh, it's not necessarily something you're required to do. This is kind of an alternative path to getting those peer-reviewed journals. But if you want more information on that, again, check out the library website, check out the links that are provided there, as they can walk you through how to actually access articles through specific journals if you choose that particular path. Take you a little longer to do it this way, but you might find something that's a little bit better than some of the stuff you would find in the other particular option that we talked about earlier. In, in terms of how to get this stuff, I know most of you are not on campus anymore, not even in the dorms, so it's really essential for you to access this stuff through our website, our library website, and to be able to access this stuff through our website, you need to be able to verify to our library that you are indeed a student at UC Berkeley. To do this, what you have to do is set up something called a proxy server. It's, it's essentially a, a way for UC Berkeley to check on your computer that you're accessing the information from wherever you're accessing it as a Berkeley student. So there is a walkthrough on the library website that shows you how to set up these proxy servers and what's going to happen when you do have to authenticate through CalNet like you probably have done in other things that you're accessing from home right now. Uh, having these proxy servers on your computer is not only going to help you for this particular paper, but it is something that once you've set it up, I encourage you to just keep on your computer because it'll probably be something that'll help you in future times when you're trying to access something as a Berkeley student and there is red tape put in front of you because Berkeley is, the UC system is, paying a ton for these things. And they want to make sure that this stuff is not just distributed to everybody, but to the school itself and the students that are accessing this stuff while they're at school. In terms of the specific things that you're going to need for this paper once you find your two resources, uh, th this paper is really about you not only showing us that you understand the differences between the papers, but you understand the information within them. So what we want you to do in the first part of this paper is talk about how the two articles are related, give us kind of an overview of what they're going to be addressing, and then summarize each of the papers in around 150 to 250 words, probably closer to the 250 side of things. Uh, I encourage you to look for specifics on these summaries and other things on the rubric, again, just so you make sure that there aren't any issues with that or any lacks of lack of clarification. And when you are summarizing these things, it's important to know that there's a huge difference between just re-saying what the author said and summarizing what the authors discussed. Uh, if you had a classmate ask you what this video was about, it would be weird and awkward for you to just pull a couple sentences from what I've said or pull a couple slides from what's on this and, and just read it back to somebody. That's what people unfortunately sometimes do when they try to summarize these papers. It's not you just pulling quotes from the authors and trying to, to kind of organize them into some type of a coherent message. Your job in this summary is to talk about what the authors talked about. You know, saying stuff like the authors were trying to accomplish this, and then they tried to do this, and this is what they did after this, is what a summary is all about. Making the same pitch that the authors do, or, or saying things like as if it's your own work in your summary is not what we're looking for at these. We want you to be able to synthesize the information and be able to organize it in a way that, that lets you actually tell somebody what that information entailed so your 
GSI or somebody else reading your paper can have an understanding of what the information was about and that you actually did understand that information. Once you're done with the meat and potatoes, the main portion of this paper, the, the summarizing side, you're going to then compare and contrast these papers. This means looking for things that are overlapping between the articles and also things that you, you really kind of notice they're different within the articles themselves. Now, when you're looking at kind of similarity and differences, it's really important to note that it's okay to, to kind of go for the big obvious things. Right? One of the things we're really trying to get you to accomplish with these papers is to, to kind of show us and, and, and be able to recognize that the differences between these resources, when you would use one versus the other, and, and what the, the real strengths and weaknesses of each type of resource is. That's why we really are holding you firm to those requirements there's also why we're, we're asking you pretty obvious, straightforward questions with this, and you don't have to get cute and, and crazy with this. You really should be able to, to kind of assess the, the general goals, the general types of information that are presented by these authors, and then describe those similarities, differences, utilities in your own words when writing this final paper. In terms of other mechanical requirements for this paper, you do need, like you did for the last paper, uh, a reference page and proper APA citations if you're going to quote things and also when you're referencing the articles. This is your chance to, to really strengthen that skill of, of citing and referencing things appropriately. So I encourage you, if you still need help with this, to check out the Purdue website and some of the other links that we've provided you with. There's also web links on the library website as well for APA formatting. So you can really strengthen this skill set because you are going to need to not only do that for this paper, but you're going to need these skills as you progress into future classes. Um, and in terms of the paper itself, Make sure that this is a, a expository. Uh, just make sure it's a paper. I, I, I don't know how to say it a little bit better than that. Uh, just make sure that there's smooth transitions, that you're covering stuff, that you've got paragraphs, and, and that you, you really are clearly describing things, not just providing lists. Uh, and that's for each different component to this paper. You do not necessarily need a title page for this, but you do need your name on the paper. Um, APA formatting does not go beyond just the reference page and the citations. We're not making you have things like introductions and abstracts and, and, and conclusion sections. That, that's not what we're looking for here. Um, but we're just, again, getting you to, to kind of familiarize yourself with the resources and making sure that you know how to correctly cite and reference things and organize things in these papers, because these are the skills that you'd be expected to have with you when you progress into future classes. I'm hoping that covered everything. Obviously, it's sometimes tough to know what we didn't cover when I'm trying to record in this particular manner. So if there is any confusion still lingering, or if once you get started, you recognize that there's something that you really still don't understand, I encourage you to reach out to your GSI or me or some of the librarian staff that we have available online 24 seven pretty much um, so they can help clarify those things and you don't go into this paper completely confused. Uh, but if you're going to do this, please do your best to ask early. We only have a few GSIs, a few staff members that can help people. And if you're waiting until the very last minute to work on this paper, you're probably going to encounter a staff member or GSI or instructor that's a little overwhelmed and not willing to help nearly as much as they would if you kind of tried to reach out long in advance. Uh, that being said, making sure that you really go through this meticulously is, is important before you start reaching out. You know, read the directions a couple times. Make sure you, you kind of sit back and try to understand exactly what's being asked, because if you do that, a lot of those things that you need clarification on might actually be pretty clear after kind of taking your time on this. Um, but no, even if you do really take your time looking at the instructions, get yourself started early, uh, this can be a challenging assignment. Uh, for those of you that have not used these search engines before, it can be tough finding the specific articles that you're looking for. And sometimes there is a need to be a little more flexible when you're searching for things. Uh, you know, I, I talked earlier about not finding 
uh, topics on serial killers. And one of the reasons why I always stress to people that maybe that's not a good topic is because students tend to often tell us that they can't find anything on those topics and they're getting really frustrated because that's what they really want to write about. There is the ability to, and you can understand this, write about things that, that are different from what you went into expecting to, to write it about. You can be flexible and find a topic that you find pretty interesting within Psychology Today or, or Newsweek or Time, and then build off of that when you're looking for your peer-reviewed journal article. And if you need to, to kind of start over again, that, that that's perfectly fine. If you need to refine your search a little bit, it's perfectly fine. It's it's a learning process, and, and there are going to be bumps in the road with these learning processes that you're going to go through, and, and this one's no different. Um, but we, we are here to help you if there is some roadblock that you just cannot figure out a way to overcome. But again, asking early will save you not only a lot of stress and, and heartbreak, but it'll make the burden on your GSIs and, and the librarian staff and even myself uh, a lot less burdensome. Uh, because trying to help a lot of people at the last minute is, is definitely not ideal. So I know many of you right now are still cranking away on paper two. Many of you are focusing on the third exam as this is getting posted. Um, but do everything in your power to start thinking about this paper and start working on this paper so it doesn't come up on you at the last second. And, and I promise not only will it be a lot easier, but, but you'll usually get a much better grade on this paper in the end if you can do that. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, again, if you need to, like the previous one, watch it a couple times, go over that stuff, go over the instructions, and I wish you all the best in your studying for the exam and all the other things that are going on in your life right now. Take care, everybody.